101.3 Grace Covenant FM Linglingaw Kaayo Zo Joey on Grace Covenant FM Miss Lynn Mercedes Mr. July Aguilar Sexy Aya on Grace Covenant FM Usa ka oras nga tulumanon, matag lunis hangtod biyernes, alas dusi ang takna sa utto, ngadto na sa launa ang takna sa hapon. Ihatod kaninyo sa atong mga program anchors, Municipal Administrator, Engineer Joselito Nonoy Miquiabas, kauban sa iyang co-host nga si Kaji Melody Yurong. Ania ang inyong mga alagad sa kahanginan. Okay, maayong udto sa lahat ng ating mga soaking tigpaminaw. Adlaw karon nga uh, Wednesday, March 2, 2022. Oras to karon Mike G, alas 12.00. So hi again sa lahat at mga viewers out there, o sa itong mga listeners out there. Good noon po sa inyong lahat. And ngayong araw po, kaya busy pa rin itong municipal administrator. So uh, in behalf na lang sa iyaha at itong makaoban karon takna as si uh, partner or partner, Zo Joey. So hi to you, Zo Joey. Ayun, isang malipayon nga uh, kaudtuhon kani mo, partner uh, Sexy Aya. Mm -hmm. Happy day sa iyo, kumusta? <laughs> okay lang ako, okay laking Wednesday. All, always man ta nga happy, ano? Mm -hmm. Despite sa mga circumstances in life, normal naman yan. Okay lang yan, dasig pa rin maging optimistic lang po. So, hi again! Sa lahat ng ating mga listeners out there, kumusta po kayo? I hope may kijing, okay na mo diha. Kasing okay po ng ating weather ngayon, kasi mainit po. Yes, napakainit. Napakainit, well and good. Sana ganoon din po ating uh, pakiramdam ngayon, nga well and good po tayo. So, happy Wednesday again. So, ulit na napunta sa itong programa ang kaning giya sa pagpili 2022. So, kagahapon, atong na... Uh, na-mention na or na-tackle na ang kabahin sa biography sa magpapili na si Rodante Dizon Marcoleta. So, ato lang siyang recap lang ano, sa mga wala nakapaminaw kagahapon and then sa mga wala po nakaview sa among YouTube na channel, pwede po mumuwat sa among replay. Kung kayo po ay isang subscriber na, please uh, click the notification bell para every time na yung mga bago na mga videos, automatic na mo-pop in sa inyong mga YouTube na platform. So, hello again po sa lahat mga viewers out there. So, akong balikon lang sa isa sa magpapili sa senatorial candidate para sa May 9 national election kani si Rodante Dizon Marcoleta. So, siya pa isang uh, representative. Marcoleta was selected to give the opening speech against the franchise hearing of ABS-CBN where he listed Several violations of the media giant. So, ato ni siyang last, um, atong May 26, 2020. And nahimo po siyang uh, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives starting from 2019 up to present. And then nahimo po siyang Congressman way back in 2016 up to present. So, a Congressman as nominee of Sagip or Party List. In 2016, under the 17th Congress, he was elected Party List Representative of the Social amelioration and genuine intervention on poverty party list more commonly known as its abbreviation nga sagip party list so yun po dati po siyang uh, anak mahirap po siya no 
was born to a family of farmers in Paniki, Tarlac. He values education and was actually an industrious student. Due to poverty, there were constant struggles, but he would always choose to see the brighter side of a thing. So, dapat ganun din po ang ating mentalidad nga. And every uh, difficult situation, mag-look ito, naagyo na yung brighter side. Mm. Naagyo yung uh, mahita buong uh, maayo and coming for the future. Ano? So, okay lang yan magdaan tayo sa mga proseso na mahirap, but I know nga, in the end, talagang makamit nyo yung mga mithiin sa buhay. So, atong awa awakon. <laughs> So, atong awaton po ang uh, ginawang uh, proseso or yung mga milestone ni uh, Rodante Dyson Marcoleta na okay lang yung magsimula sa mahirap kasi I know talaga, mm -hmm. talagang magsisikap at magsisikap po tayo. Ano? Another one po nga amo pong natako kagahapon, review lang po ito sa lahat ng mga late tuners out there. Hello po sing lahat dyan sa atong mga late viewers din. So, recap lang po din siya. And kagahapon, amo pong nahisgutan ang uh, biography na isa din sa magpapili para sa uh, senatorial uh, candidate or senatorial slate or senatorial candidate nga <laughs> for May 9, 2022 election sa national po. Si Mark Aguilar Villar. So, si Mark Aguilar Villar po, hindi po uh, bago sa inyong mga pandinig kasi pag sinabing Villar, talagang meron nang tumatatak no? sa inyong mga isipan kasi yung former father niya is a former senate. President si Manny Villar. And hindi lang po doon sa political side na sila maila, apil po sa ilang uh, business din. Kasi sila din po ang mga, uh, isa din po ang kanyang papa na business tycoon na marami na din mga na-build na mga houses, na bigay din ng mga houses. So yun po ang kanyang anak again na si Mark Aguilar Villar. Na talagang tumatak din sa kanyang, uh, sa inyong mga achievements is kaning uh, Villar con build, build, build program generated 1.48 million jobs during pandemic. Despite restriction brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Public Works and Highways or Highways build, build, build program was able to provide a total of 1,482,119 jobs for Filipinos nationwide. For the period of March 2020 to August 2021. So, di ba, kahit nga pandemic yung ating experience or pandemic ba nang dumating, talaga nakatuling din si Villar. Especially sa lahat ng mga nawawalan ng trabaho or nawawalan ng trabaho. Kasi nga umabot sa 1.48 million jobs during pandemic. So, imagine kung ilang tao po ang kanya natulungan. So, yun po ang talagang parang naging landmark or yung tumatak kay... Uh, Mark Aguilar Villar. And then marami siya mga projects na na-complete na complete din kaning uh, for uh, for the tourism rope infrast for the tourism rope infrastructure program country. A total of 121 million was allocated from 2016 to 2021 for construction, improvement and upgrading of 4,268 kilometers of road. With 2,436 kilometers of tourism roads completed. And then for the kal Kalsada Tumo sa Paliparan Wheels at Daungan Kon Katuparan Project, from 2016 to 2021, a total of 29 billion has already been allocated for the upgrading and improvement of 906 kilometers of access road to airports, railway stations, and seaports with 443 kilometers of it already completed. So, yun po ang kanyang talagang tumatak na naging accomplished po niya. Aiming na makaupo po sa uh, senator kani si Mark Aguilar Villar. And then, lastly po sa mga nahisgutin kagahapon, ang kanyang isa din magpapili para sa upcoming na May 9 na national election as senador po kani si Emmanuel Joel Jose Villanueva. So, kilala din po siya dahil nga po sa kanyang uh, tawag or nickname na Test the man. Oh, test the man. Kasi uh, kami din is produkto din ng Tesda. Kasi ako din, nag-aral din ako ng driving, ano? And then si Zoe Joey, parang cooking sa Tesda. Sakto ba ko, Zoe Joey? Coming pa. <laughs> <laughs> coming pa. <laughs> so, coming pa daw. Well, anyways, okay lang yan. And then sa mga talagang tumatak kay uh, Emmanuel Joel Jose Villanueva during sa 18th Congress, through the passage of his pet legislation, such as the first a time Job Seekers Assistant Act, or also known as Republic Act 11261, 
and in cunning the distribution of 100% service charge to our rank and file employees of restaurant, hotels, and similar establishment, also known as Republic Act 11360, and the recent cunning doctor para sabayan law, also known as Republic Act 11509. Described as a landmark legislation with dual objectives of expanding access to medical education and augmenting our human resource for, for health. And then uh, during sa tuig na 2010 hanggang 2015, nahimul Director General at Technical Education Skills and Development Authority, Con Tesda. And then way back in 2002 hanggang 2010, nahimul siyang Congressman. Kabahin aning Citizens Battle Against Corruption kon CIBC Party List Representative. So again, yun po ang kanilang mga na-accomplish. Na no? Yun po ang uh, talaga na-accomplish ni uh, Emmanuel Joel Jose Villanueva. And ngayong araw po, tatlo na namang personahe aming pag-uusapan o among ihatag sa inyuhang information. Kabahin po sa magpapili din sa senatorial candidate or atong mga senatorial candidate for the upcoming May 9 national election. So, ngayong araw po, so among paghahisgutan na please na lang ko Zoe Joey, ang talambuhay o personal information sa isang magpapili na si Herbert Maclang Bautista. So, Zoe Joey? So, uh, personal information ni Herbert Maclang Bautista is a Filipino actor and politician who served as mayor of Quezon City, the Philippines' largest city by population from 2010 to May. 2019. So, ang full name, no? Again, si, siya si uh, Herbert Maclang Bautista o kilala din siya sa nickname nga uh, Bistek. Bistek yung uh, angga niya. So, birthday, May 12, 1968. Natawa siya din sa Quezon City, Philippines. Ang iyong mga ginikanan, pangalan si Mpapa, si Hermenio Butch, no? Butch Bautista. And si ang inahan po, si Rosario Baby Maclang. Na siya yung mga siblings, si Hero Bautista, an incumbent, 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 uh, Quezon City Councilor from the 4th District and also Harleen Bautista, formerly married to Romnick Sarmienta. Kabihin po siya ang uh, educational background ni Herbert Maclang Bautista. So, wala na kindigit diri ang elementary, no? High school. O, pero ayong college, nag-college siya din sa New Era University, pursued the Bachelor of Law. He's also an uh, alumnus of San Ved Beda College of Manila to pursue a degree in philosophy and letters. So, he later joined the National Defense College of the Philippines to pursue a Master in National Security Administration. He is also an alumnus of the University of, of the Philippines, Diliman, or University of Philippines, Diliman, where he obtained a doc directorate degree in political science. So, hindi lang po, salamat kay Zoe Joey. So, hindi lang po kilala si uh, Herbert Bautista, isang uh, politician. O, oh, naging uh, kilala din siya sa spotlight sa showbiz. So, sino bang nakakilala kay Herbert Bautista? Alam ko sa lahat ng mga mahilig manood ng mga movies dyan, mga series, ano. So, kilala natin si Herbert Bautista. Isa din siya nga, uh, uh, isa din siya nga artist. So, muna ang mga pelikula na talagang uh, nag-show up uh, si Herbert Bautista. So, one of which... Way back in 1981, ang title sa iyong movie kanis, kaning uh, Oh My Mama. <laughs> and then, uh, sa tuwig naman na 1984, ang Baguettes as Gilbert. 1984, then kaning Hot Shots. 1984, kaning uh, Julian Vacore as Densho. And then, sa tuwig din na 1984, kaning Baguettes 2 as Gilbert. And then, during sa tuwig na 1984, ang title po sa kanyang movie kaning Shake, Rattle, and Roll o Douglas. 1985, Commander Bawang as Tick Boy. Commander Bawang. Bakit kaya tinawag na Commander Bawang? Siguro maraming mga ano, maraming mga wak-wak doon. <laughs> kaya merong Bawang. <laughs> okay, sa tuwig din na 1985, ang title po sa kanyang pelikula, kaling, Kaning Like Father, Like Son, as Mariano Nani Batu Balani. And then sa 1985 din, ang title sa kanyang pelikula, Kaning Mom, May we go out as John Ramos. Oh, ma'am, may we go out po. Parang naalang tayo sa paaralan nito. SK 
excuse me mommy I go out kay hiun kay ko <laughs> <laughs> pero dito dito pa lang sa canteen canteen oh, lahos yeah. lahos da ito lahos so sa lahat ng mga teachers dyan educators natin dyan pasensya na po ma'am kung ito talaga ang aming term mommy I go out I want to go to CR oh, yes. pero hindi pala punta sa canteen, canteen. <laughs> oh, guilty daw so joey dyan oh, inana ko <laughs> Ay, <laughs> CR na mo, nasa left, pero mato ko sa right. <laughs> Tuyok na ako no, ay. Kanya, ba, murag na, kuan siya, murag na, dis, na kuan si Zojo at nung time. Bored ako. So, kailangan kong magliwaliw pa minsan-minsan, ma'am. And then, sa tuwing din na 1985, ang title po sa kanyang pelikula, kaning Working Boys as Kermit and Many More. So, marami din siya mga nagawang pelikula, ano? Kabahin naman po sa iyong political career way back in 1986 to 1989. He was the president of the Kabataang Barangay National Federation and was appointed ex officio city councilor representing the youth sector of Quezon City. During the year 1992 to 1995, he was elected councilor of Quezon City and was concurrently chairperson of the Committee on Tourism and Cultural Affairs. He was the youngest vice mayor of Quezon City. Bautista became the youngest and first bachelor of vice mayor or first bachelor vice mayor of Quezon City elected in May 1995. During the year 1998, he ran for mayor but lost this incumbent Mel Matay in his third and final term. After he suffered defeat in election, he was appointed by President Joseph Estrada as commissioner at large of National Youth Commission. During the year 2001, Bautista returned to politics when he was elected as vice mayor and re-elected in 2004 and 2007 respectively. And then sa tuig naman na 2010, he took off in office as the mayor of Quezon City after his landslide victory in the 2010 local election in Quezon City. Kabahin naman sa awards and recognition ni Herbert Maclang Bautista. So, he is board director of the YMCA-QC, INC, a member of the Rotary Club of Kamuning District 3780. Another one, siyang awards and recognition, founding president of the Association of Graduate Students and alumni of the UP College of of public administration in Diliman. So, another one, a uh, board director of the Katipunan ng mga artista sa pelikulang Pilipino at Television con KAPPT and member of the Philippine Constitution Association con Phil uh, Consa. So, another one, the awards and recognition, national president of the National Movement of Young Legislators con NMYL. A six thousand member of organization composed of vice governors. We have board members, vice mayors, and councilors, including Sangguniang Kabataan Federation presidents. So hindi lang po na dumaan sa political career or talaga hindi lang po siya dumaan sa showbiz. And then nagpolitical, nagpolitiko den. And then naapos siya na 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 undergo na kaning military career. So talagang napaka achiever den. Ni ano ni Mark Herbert Bautista. Sa pagpili, 2022. So kabahi naman sa military career, Herbert Bautista joined the reserve force of the AFP through the Reserve Command, PA, and was subsequently enlisted as Master Sergeant in the Philippine Army with completion of his basic ROTC with the San Beda ROTC unit. So, dapat talaga ibalik itong ROTC na ito, no? So, yun po talaga ang plano din ng ating Vice Presidential, Sara Duterte. And then, he reported to the 131st Standby Reserve Division, Philippine Army, and was given the designation of Brigade Sergeant Major of the newly formed Light Armor Brigade Reserve. Also po sa kanyang military career, he applied for a commission when he was Vice Mayor of Quezon City and was commissioned with the rank of Army Captain. He, he resigned his commission as Army Captain and was recommissioned as a Lieutenant Colonel through the commissioning program of Master in National Security Administration con AFP Circular Number 30 of the National Defense College of the Philippines. He is the commanding officer of the uh, 105 or 150 sec 200. Ano ba pagbasahan nito? 
105 150 2nd Infantry Brigade Ready Reserve which is a component of the 15th Infantry Division Ready Reserve and Army Reserve Command. So, ang dami din yung pinagdaanan na, no? <laughs> Talagang matibay na matibay si Herbert, <laughs> Herbert uh, Maklang Bautista. Talagang dumaan din siya sa mga training na iyan. Sa Pagpili, 2022. Imagine, hang, naging, uh, naging Master Sergeant and then himo din siyang uh, Army Captain and then nag-retired siya. Uh, he resigned pala, he resigned his commission as Army Captain and was recommissioned as Lieutenant Colonel. O, diba? Bonggang bongga. And then, kabahi naman siya accomplishments. Sir Herbert Bautista po is uh, kabago, uh, bago lang po ito. Talagang fresh na fresh po ito na balita or way back sa 20, uh, 21 na tuig. Ay, ngayong, ngayong, ano lang pala, ngayong tuig na ito. So, yung accomplishment is senatorial bet or senatorial bet. Herbert Bautista says, Marawi compensation bill should be law before the third steps down. He was called last February 9, 2022 on Congress and Malacanang to ensure the passage of the Marawi Compensation Bill into law before President Duterte's term. And then, kabahin naman siyang controversy. For sure, lahat ng mga malitas dyan is alam na alam ng controversy na ito. Kasi po, <laughs> naling siya sa ating queen of all media na si Miss Chris Aquino. So, nakalagay po dito na si Herbert Bautista apologize to Chris Aquino, Mel Sarmiento, for loose remark. It was certainly inappropriate and a mistake. So, sabi nga niya doon is uh, Totga, the one that got, got away. away. So, parang uh, starstruck talaga siya kay Miss Chris Aquino. Pero hindi lang nagpatuloy ang kanilang love, love team or kanilang love story, no? And then, kabahay naman po siyang platform pag siya po ay uh, mapili as one of the senatorial candidate para sa atong upcoming na May 9 national election. So, muli ang platform, Bautista, who is running for senator on a platform of internet reforms, livelihood for all, and youth welfare. So, yun po ang kanyang platform na kung siya po ay manalo bilang isang senador po sa bansang Pilipinas. So, again, iyang platform is kaning internet reforms, livelihood for all, and youth welfare. Nakijiyo oras si Karen, alas 12.22. So, before ta mag-proceed sa other na kandidato, uh, basing na akay gustong uh, ikuan di Azul Joey, recognize naman sa lahat nating mga viewers out there sa itong Facebook account. Sige, kay Morag, nagano na po sila, no? Nag, na, nakatambay yun sila. So, thank you so much for watching. Di na sa ito ang uh, Facebook account. Hi and hello sa inyo. So, thank you so much for watching from Jamela G. M. Malon. Sabi niya, partner sexy Aya, good day DJ on board. Ayun. Sabi niya. Another one, uh, comment from Gapol Rian. Good noon, Ma'am Aya watching. And good noon, Ma'am Zojo from Gapol Rian. So, hello po sa lahat natin mga viewers out there sa atong Facebook account. So, hello po sa lahat dyan. I hope na kijing uh, okay na mo di ha? Yeah. Okay, ada sa lahat. Okay, and that's last. Sa mga late tuners, sa, sa mga late viewers, uh, please na replay na lang mo Mikey G ha. Again, sa lahat mga late tuners and late viewers, so pwede mo mag-tune in sa atong 101.3 Grace Covenant Benet. FM. So maduog po ninyo ang lahat ng mga gustong tumakbo or gusto magpapili kabahan sa senator para po sa May 9 na 2022 national election. And then ngayong uh, Oras na ito, alas 12.23, na napod mi uh, i-share sa inyo ang uh, personal information na isa din sa magpapili para sa upcoming uh, May 9 na uh, national election. So, isa po siyang uh, retired Filipino police general and politician. He served as a chief of the Philippine National Police. He is the sixth PNP chief under the Duterte's administration. So, sino po? Sa hula niyo po, sino ito? <laughs> well, ito po ay sa katauhan ni Guillermo Lorenzo Talentino Elizar. So, siya po isang retired Filipino police general and politician. He served as chief of the Philippine National Police and he is the number six or number six PNP chief under the Duterte's administration. So, pag din ako, Joey, partner. So, Guillermo Elizar. 
accept the challenge to work for the vision of genuine reform and transformation for the Filipino people, and I accept the challenge to run for Senator of the Republic of the Philippines. So, Moni, ang yang gi story partner, no? So, yang a full name again, siya si Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Eliazar. Ang yang anga, tawag siya sa Gilior or Gemo. So, ang birth date niya, November 13, 1965, natawa siya din sa Tagkawayan, Quezon, Philippines. Yung family, pangalan si Papa, si Victor Eliasar, was a third guerrilla, uh, guerrilla fighter. Mm -hmm. Guerrilla fighter during the last war. Wow. And um, si yung mother po, wala naka-state din no? na siya spouse, uh, si Lali Hernandez, and they have uh, four children. Kabahin naman si yung education ni Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Eliasar. Si General Eliasar was a member of PMA class Hinirang of 1987. He graduated cum laude of his class. His immediate predecessor or predecessor as chief PNP General Sinas was his classmate or Sinas was his classmate. He elected to serve in the PNP as a police inspector he went up the ladder and reached the top hierarchy through dedicated service and exemplary exemplary work thank you so kabahin naman sa yung work experience sa tuig po na 2021 himo siyang chief sa philippine national police and then sa year 2020 to 2020, 2021 nahimo siyang deputy chief for administration at philippine national police Way back in 2019 to 2020, nahimo siyang chief of directorial staff at Philippine National Police. And then sa tuig naman 2018 to 2019, nahimo siyang regional director at National Capital Region Police Office. And then sa tuig din na 2018, nahimo siyang regional director, PNP Police Regional Office 4A. And sa tuig din na 2017 hanggang 2018, Nahimo siyang District Director at Quezon City Police District. So, matapang ito kasi isang police nga. Mm -hmm. Okay, his journey as a police officer from a QCPD to Calabarzon to Crame. Elizar was the former chief of the Quezon City Police District on QCPD. Under his leadership, the QCPD garnered high trust ratings and surveys conducted in February 2018 by then PNP Chief Oscar Abayalde to access the performance of police units. He later became a regional director of Calabarzon in, 20, in April 2018. Before he was brought back to NCR, he returned to Metro Manila in June 2018 to lead the National Capital Region Police Office. And then siyang journey naman to Krone, and his first career continued rise when he was when he was installed in January 2020 as the PNP Deputy Chief for Operations, a post considered as the number three cop. He was tapped to be the commander of the Joint Task Force COVID-19 shield, overseeing law enforcement all over the country during the pandemic. So, kabahin naman siyang project as the, uh, as the, uh, as a police, no? Kabahin naman siyang project, new PNP Chief Elizar launches intensified a cleanliness policy that aims to repaint the tarnished reputation of the police. Part of this program is the reforming initiatives will ensure quality among the ranks of police officers. According to Elizar, he will order the use of quick response con QR codes for the application of all police officers nationwide to weed out palakasan or a backer system. And then siyang accomplishment naman, he was proud that people's trust and confidence in the police force improve under his watch. Talagang matibay ito. <laughs> he also lead the administrative support to COVID-19 operation task force con ASCOFT, which is tasked with coordinating all PNP administrative actions in support of police operational response to COVID-19. And then, kabahin naman sa another one sin accomplished, Mikey G. Kaning one of the biggest accomplishment that we achieve is the confiscation of more than 6 billion worth of illegal drugs and the accounting of more than 24,000 drug personalities 
including the neutralization of the 11 big time traffickers, including the appointment of the International Drug Syndicate in the Philippines during our recent accomplishment in Sambales, Bataan, and Cavite. Kabahin naman sa awards and recognition ni uh, Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Eleazar, he was featured in the League magazine, a publication that shares inspiring stories about Filipino leadership and local governance. Another siyang award pod, he was the first commander of the Joint Task Force COVID-19 or COVID Shield. Again, Joint Task Force COVID Shield, the law enforcement and public safety arm of the Interagency Task Force on Management of Emerging Infectious, infectious Disease called IATF. Dash M E I D amid the COVID 19 pandemic. Another one, saying awards and recognition. General Police General Eliezer also became the chief of the Calabarzon Police and the National Capital Region Police Office in 2016. He became the commander of the Quezon City Police District where he led the relentless anti crime and anti illegal drug operations. So, yun po ang kanyang mga awards and recognition. So, kabahin naman siyang controversy, Mekki G, sa lahat nating mga listeners out there, mga viewers out there. So, former PNP Chief Guillermo Elizar test positive for COVID-19. He received the result of his RT-PCR test on the eve of January 11, 2022. He contracted COVID-19 for the first time. He called the public to get vaccinated and boosted against coronavirus as soon as possible. So, Hindi po siya nakaligtas po sa COVID-19. So, panawagan niya sa lahat ng mga tao na hindi pa po nagpabakuna. Pagkabakuna na po kayo, Mekki G. And kung pwede magpa-booster po. So, calling sa lahat ng mga <laughs> lumulupyo. Dali sa lungsod ng bakulod kung hindi pa po kayo nagpabakuna. O, please do. Pagkabakuna na po kayo. And sa lahat din po ng mga young ones, ages uh, 12 to 17, sakto ba ko? Uh, pwede po bumabakuna, Mekki G. And then sa atong mga young ones, then sa atong mga young ones talaga, <laughs> 5 to 11 years old, I hope na pag po schedule, ano, baka yung ibang mga kids out there is natatakot. So, pwede po silang gabayan sa lahat ng ating, sa kanila mga parents para po magpabakuna. Kahit nga si, ano, si PNP Chief Elizar is hindi talaga nakaligtas din sa COVID-19. And then, ang kanyang platform naman kung siya po ay manalo as senator, so, he vowed to provide more livelihood opportunities for solo parents in the country. So, I belong. <laughs> Talagang tawang-tawa. <laughs> and then another one, Elizar vows to focus on security, peace, and order if he wins at Senate seat. So, yun po ang kanyang plataforma po sa kabahin ni Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Elizar. Yeah, so, 2022. So, I hope Mekki G is kamo po ay nahayagan, ano? So, sala, sana po lahat kayo is nakapaglista na sa inyong mga gustong butaran para sa May 9 National Elections. So, I hope so so I hope po nga everyone is talagang naminaw ka ron. And then, makatulong po talaga itong programa ang kaning giya sa pagpili 2022. So, siguro yung iba is, ah, sino ba yan sila para ano? At least ba magayran tagay for 6 years ba ilang kuan pag serbisyo sa Pilipinas ano mm -mm. mahirap nga makontrol yung naa sa barangay ka yung naa sa municipio ka yung nasa pro province ka how much more pag buong Pilipinas Dahon. na imong <laughs> ihandle so dapat talaga siya sa or atong uting kayon gyud ang ilang mga plataporma ilang mga na accomplish din kasi iyan din po ang kanang atong basihan pod no talagang ah, okay gudin siya botaran ah, okay gudin siya kay talagang na siya uh, puso na tum handang tumulong na siya uh, ear nga handang makinig sa lahat ng mga hinanaing ng kanya mga constituent so tulong po ito hindi po ito pag ano lang sa mga viewers natin sa lahat ng listeners out there I know kayo din is mahilig manood ng TV for sure po is guided din po kayo and dito po sa lungsod ng Bacolod is meron din po kaming program na talagang handan din kayong tulungan kung sino po ang angay nga butaran. Gia sa pagpili! 2022! Hello kayo mga kaji, oras ko rin, alas 12.34. And then, ang panglas po panghuli sa among pag-uusapan ngayon na isa din sa magpapili para sa itong senatorial candidate or senator para sa May 9 national election. So, Zojoey, palug na lang ko. 
partner. So another one. So last na to, yeah, na, na last na, na niya. Atong paghisgutan na usapod sa mudagan na pagkasinator no. So kilang kilala po natin to. <laughs> sa personal information ni Francis Joseph Cheese Guevara Escudero is a Filipino lawyer and a politician. Became a politician at the age of 28. So, ang complete name, again, siya po si Francis Joseph Guevara Escudero. Kilalang-kilala po natin siya sa pangalan po na Cheese. Uh, kung kayo po ay magpa-picture may KJ, so ang, ano bang dapat sabihin ng mga photographer? Ikaw, Joey. Say Cheese! Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, hindi siya nakakalimutan. Kasi yun nga, pagka kayo, pagka, pagka tayo, <laughs> pag tayo po is gusto magpa-picture, sabing sabing sasabihin ng mga photographer. Say cheese! Uh, Naanagin sa tundoghan ni si Cheese Good Char. <laughs> well, continue na lang, partner. So, birth date, uh, October 10, 1969. So, yung edad ka lang, 51 na siya. So, hometown niya, nasa Sorsogon, Philippines. So, yung family po, yung pangalan si Papa, siya si former agriculture secretary and assemblyman, si Salvador Escudero. Pangalan si Mama, si Evelina B. Guevara. Si yung spouse po, and sabi nga si, ni ate kanina, or ni partner sexy Aya, <laughs> na, na sa heart. Si na na sa heart. <laughs> and speaking of heart, ang iyang pares din, no? usapog ka uh, actress, si Heart Evangelista. So, yun talagang bagay na bagay sila, no? Sana all, no? Sana all. <laughs> Pwede ba nga, sana kami din ni Cheese. <laughs> Para may heart. Oh. Para may heart din ah. <laughs> sana on. <all. laughs> Pano nga yan? Sana may heart. Sana may heart. <laughs> okay. Ayun po. Si Heart Evangelista, siya po isang vlogger and also a businesswoman. So, ang former spouse niya, si Christine Flores. Uh, married sila noong 2005 and then announced sila noong 2011 who is a singer and a stage actress in uh, way back 1999. So, uh, children niya, si Chisi and si Kenyo, or si Kenyo. Kamayin naman siyang educational background ni uh, Chis or ni Francis Joseph Guevara Escudero. So, nag-elementary siya din uh, sa University of the Philippines Integrated School. The same time, uh, uh, hindi din, as uh, a high school din, same lang din yung school uh, sa University of the Philippines It Integrated School. Nag-college din siya din uh, sa University of the Philippines Diliman Ang, with a course of uh, Bachelor of Law. Then, uh, nag-post-graduate po siya sa yes, uh, Georgetown University with a degree uh, Master of Laws. He passed the bar in 1994. Mm -hmm. So, before po siya na-enter sa politics, na ito po ang kanyang dating profession. Una po, he is a lawyer and then nagtudlo po siya dito sa political science in UP. Nahimo po siyang lecturer di ha, sa graduate school sa ADMU way back in 2000. Naging a junior political analyst at Batangas Development Planning Office way back in 1989. And then, himupod siyang senior lecturer sa law at UP way back in 1996 to 1998. So, kabahin naman sa iyong career in politics way back in 2019 or uh, tuig 2019 up to present, isa po siyang governor. As governor of Sorsogon at Chish, or cheese push for the speedy implementation of numerous projects on health, infrastructure, agriculture, social services, tourism, and disaster risk management that immensely improve the lives of his fellow Sorsoganos. And then sa tuig naman 2007 hanggang 2019 na himo siyang senador. 2007 to 2013, he was one of the most productive members of the Senate filing numerous bills on electoral reforms, education, agriculture, justice, and human rights issues. He chaired various committees including finance, justice, and human rights, banks, financial institutions, and currencies, environment, and natural resources, and ways and means. Sa tuig naman na 2013, in his 2013 SALN, Escudero Network jumped to a 8.243 million on the strength of properties, five residential and one he acquired by succession. In year 2012, 
Escudero was the poorest senator based on his statement of asset and liabilities and net worth. In 2013, he was the second poorest senator next to uh, Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. And in sa tuig naman na 1998-2007, nahimu siyang congressman. 1998, he is representative of the 1st District of Sorsogon. In his uh, three terms in the House of Representative, he served as Assistant Majority Floor Leader and House Minority Floor Leader. So, madabi talaga siyang experience. So, kabahin naman sa yang awards and recognition, he is one of the country's 10 outstanding young men contoim in 2005 for youth leadership. Nakarawat po siyang award, kabahin aning youth achiever and government way back in 1999. Nakadawat po siyang award kabahin aning most outstanding congressman of the year, year uh, of the year way back 2000. He is the only Filipino included in the Asian News Network Asia Idols in 2007. He is yeah, nakadawat po siyang award kabahin aning honored as one of the young global leaders by the World Economic Forum in 2008. He also received the Rotary Golden Wheel Award in 2012 in recognition of his contribution in political governance and the legislative field. Nakuha po siyang award kabahin aning most admired TV personality and TV seal way back in 2008. And then lastly po sa kanyang nagawang or nakuha na awards and recognition, kaning outstanding public servant of the year 2000. O karon ato pong i-share no kabahin pod siya ang accomplishment ni Francis Joseph Guevara Escudero or kilala natin sa cheese. So, accomplishment niya una, zero backlog on the creation of 281 additional courts. Another one siya ang accomplishment, heard an act upon all 645 bills referred to his committees. The another one allocated 500,000 of his PDAF for the construction, renovation of public markets in all cities and municipalities in the country. Another one allocated PDAF to all regional hospitals. Another one see an accomplishment filed 149 bills as principal author. So an author sponsored or authored or sponsored 63 laws among them uh, sa Republic Act 9504 tax exception for minimum wage earners and increased tax exceptions. Another one Republic Act 9514 revised fire code of the Philippines. Republic Act 9576 increased maximum deposit insurance coverage to 500,000. Another one, Republic Act 9745, Anti-Torture Act. We have also Republic Act 9946, an act granting additional retirement survivorship and other benefits to members of the judiciary. Another one, Republic Act 9993, or Philippine Coast Guard Act. Republic Act 9995, Anti-Photo and Video Voyeur, Voyeurism Act. And then another one, sa iyang na-accomplish, ang kanin Republic Act 9999, also known as Free Legal Assistance Act. And then kanin Republic Act 1002, also known as Philippine Red Cross Act. And then, can Republic Act 10344, also known as Risk Reduction and Preparedness Equipment Act. And then, can Republic Act 10158, also known as Discriminalized Vagrancy. And then, can Republic Act 10353, also known as Anti Enforce or Involuntary Disappearance Act of 2012. And lastly, po, sa accomplished, can Republic Act 10368 also known as Human Rights Victims Reparation and Recognition Act of 2013. So, kabahin naman siyang controversy, Chase Escudero get backlash after posting opinion on anti-terror bill which his, which his mom initially co-authored. Sabi nga niya, No one is for terrorism but government should be careful not to inflict the very same evil they are trying to prevent on their own citizens that what the Bill of Rights is for. 
to limit the power of government and protect the rights, liberties of the people. No law can override it. Yun po ang sabi niya, no? Sa uh, Cheese Escudero Conferences sa uh, Joseph Guevara Escudero na talagang yung mama niya po is co-authored kabahin aning anti-terror bill. And lastly po, kabahin naman siyang platform kung siya po ay palalin na makapasok po sa senador, as senator. So, iya pong platform is, I would like to uplift the whole country. So, kaya ba niya ito? <laughs> Kakayanin. Kakayanin. And then, another one, kani yung vows to revive pandemic and all hazard preparedness act. And lastly, is Codero to push for LGU empowerment. empowerment. So, yun po ang kanyang platforma po kung siya po ay uh, pala pala rin makanalo ulit as senator para po sa May 9 national election. Sa so, pagpili! 2022! So yun po mga kiji, ang tatlo po sa ating napag-usapan or among na-share no, na information, na personal information sa mga magpapili po sa atong uh, May 9 national election. So again, kaganina, nagsugod mi kabahin sa personal information ni uh, Herbert Maclam Bautista. And then sinundan ni uh, Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Eliasar. And then, karon na po ang panghuli po si Francis Joseph Guevara Escudero. So, I hope po sa lahat ating mga listeners out there, mga viewers din is nahayagan na mo, Mike G. Paulit-ulit-ulit-ulitin ko talaga ito, palagi po. Na sana po is natulungan kayo para kung sino po ang inyong piliin ano, nga maging kandidato po. At tandaan na six, term or six years po ang kanilang pagservisyo. So, dapat tum pumili tayo ng tamang-tama. Vote wisely. Sa lahat na ating mga listeners and viewers out there, so alamin po natin, sana po is talagang nakatulong po ito, ang programa na Giyas sa Pagpili 2022. Nikki G, all the secret, alas 12.46. Basig na apakay gustong uh, recognize Zoe Joey. So, kaning mga naka-like lang sa to ang, ano, naka-react lang sa to ang, ano, no? So, happy afternoon kay Ma'am Audrey Makti, or kilala po natin siya sa Nanay Ga, yung kasamahan namin. Thank you so much for watching. From, okay, nag-react din si Jerry Bandala Rimolio. And happy afternoon kay Aili and Marilyn Taliktik de Lustrico. So, hello po sa lahat dyan. I hope na kay Jay nga okay na mo rin ha. <laughs> so, sino pa ba? Well, dito naman po sa atong YouTube na channel na ay uh, chat, ano? So, from Ma'am Erlinda Bernasebo. Hello, Ma'am Aya and Ma'am Zo Joey. Good noon. Happy Wednesday both. And God bless. So, nagsabi din si Ma'am Erlinda Bernasebo, say cheese! Talagang prolong yung letter Z. Kayo ba? Kaya niyo bang sabihin na? Say cheese! Cheese! <laughs> <laughs> Tulog na. <laughs> Tulog na. Patulog na pala. Akala mo, gusto pa niyang mag-smile and magpa-picture. <laughs> per na inaantok na Zojo we say cheese <laughs> patulog na yun. patulog na pala siya so yan po so hello po sa lahat ng mga viewers out there mga late viewers po so pwede mo maka -re replay ano maka view ulit sa among uh, Facebook account that's a Grace Covenant official account and then sa mga sa mong YouTube na channel then that's Grace Covenant FM 101.3 so pwede mo ma makinig ulit kung naamo enough time nga mamino na maka-impart po sa inyong pagpili especially po sa lahat ng mga OFWs dyan ayaw po nakatulong itong programa na Gia sa Pagpili 2022 na mahayagan mo kung sino ba talagang angay nga pili on. so hello po sa lahat ng mga OFWs out there igit mo sila Zo Joey yun, hi sa itong mga OFWs no? bisan pa man sa ito ang mga mga parente no? mga relatives na ito diha ang nasa gawas, amping mo as always Di man, oh, matra na sayod sa panahon pero kailangan maglampingay ng good mo din. Happy afternoon din ni Ate Ivy and if I'm not mistaken, marag karun, ma karun nga month na ata siya muli. Kung, basta, amping mo daranta na. <laughs> no, so, yun po, mag-amping, amping ta. And then, continue pa din yung pagpalo natin sa atong health protocols. Mm -hmm. Na kahit yung iba is nasa alert level 1 na. Dito po sa... Lano del Norte is alert level 2 pa din. So, hoping and praying talagang ma-attain natin or makuha natin yung alert level, level one. 1. Pero kahit ganun pa man, maging uh, followers din po tayo sa atong minimum health protocols. So, i-follow gya po nato na. Para talagang uh, hindi, mawala na yan si, ano, 
si COVID-19 na no? Lagi, COVID-19, 2022 na ron. Oy, move on na. <laughs> Ayaw pa niyang umalis talaga. So, dapat tayo na po ang gumawa ng paraan kung paano talaga nga dilitaptan mm. ni virus na si COVID-19. So, mga kiji oras si Corinne, alas 12.49. So, bukas naman, I hope na alang gyapon mo diha para mamino o talagang mag-interact din sa among programa sa Giyas sa Pagpili 2022. Oras na mga alas 12.49. So, bukas, March 3, 2022, Thursday po yan. Mag-uban, uban na po tabalik. Same time, 12 to 1, same frequency po. 101.3 Grace, Covenant FM. So, once again, goodbye and God bless us all. Bakalad! Padayon Pagsidlak Gaya sa Pagpili 2022 2022